number 9 was this function, f of x equals negative 2x cubed times x plus 1 times x plus 2 quantity squared. So this one says find the degree. Uh, the degree, you'd have to multiply it all out to really see it. But it'd be, what would be the biggest term? I guess I'd have an x cubed, an x to the fourth, an x to the fifth, an x to the sixth, so it's degree six. Okay? That wasn't the question. Uh, the leading term, I guess, would be negative two x to the sixth. You can see that, right? Even without me multiplying it all out. If you multiply it out, you'll see it also. What would the leading coefficient be? Sure, that's called the leading coefficient. The constant term. Well, that's going to be the term at the very end if I expanded the whole thing. And let's see. Maybe the way to do it is a little bit at a time. What would be the constant term of just this piece? See, that's a piece that I learned how to expand very quickly in my head. I can do x plus 2, x plus 2, because I took other algebra classes, right? I know that that's x squared plus 4x plus 4, correct? I multiply it out. And then, if I were to take that piece and multiply it by the x plus 1, I don't want to do that all. But what's the constant term going to be, the very last piece? Well, it's going to come from 1 times 4, so it's going to be what? 4. And then... When I multiply that by negative 2x cubed, I'm getting 4 times negative 2x cubed, right? Oh, that's not a constant term. That's negative 8x cubed. I wouldn't call that a constant term. I'd say there is none. Is that what the book says? Zero? Okay. There's no constant term. The constant term is zero. You guys with me? Okay. And then the end behavior. Okay, so this is interesting. When you have a polynomial, all right, let's start with a smaller example. Let's take um, x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay, when we talk about end behavior, we're actually getting a, into a calculus idea. We're saying, what happens as x goes to infinity? That's the question I'm asking when I say end behavior. I'm also asking, also, as x goes to negative infinity. I'm also going to ask that. In other words, I'm moving along the number line, and I'm putting in, am I thinking about inputs or outputs when I write that? Inputs. The inputs are getting really large or really small. And the problem is, is that it's hard to think about big numbers. My favorite big number to think about when I'm first learning this concept of n behavior is 1,000. I'm going to put 1,000 in for x, okay? So if I have this example, I'm going to call this thing uh, h of x, okay? If h of x is this guy, and I think about h of 1,000, that's a pretty big number, right? It would be 1,000 squared minus 4 times 1,000 plus 4. Are you with me? Okay. Now, what's 1,000 squared? Well, I can just do 1,000 times 1,000, and I know that means you just add a bunch of zeros to it, right? Six zeros, that's right. So it's a million. That's why I like using 1,000. So a million. So how much is H of 1,000? What if I said about a million? Would you agree with that? Because when you take a million and you subtract 4,000, guess what, guys? We're still pretty close to a million. And if I add 4, guess what? 
We're still pretty close to a million. Are you with me? Okay. What if I put in a million in for H? Well, now instead of having six zeros there, you'd have 12 zeros. You'd have a trillion. Are you with me? So what if I said H of a million is about what? A trillion. You with me? Is this thing getting big? It's getting big and getting big quickly. All right? So as X goes to infinity, I would say H of X approaches infinity. That's the end behavior. You guys with me? What about as X approaches negative infinity? Well, now I'm putting in a very negative number, something like H of negative 1,000. What's that going to be? About what? Would you agree it's about positive a million? Why? Well, because the only term that really matters is the leading term. The leading term is going to tell me about end behavior. The leading term. And that's one of the reasons they wanted me to find it. The constant term isn't going to affect end behavior very much. It's still going to be about a million. Are you with me? So when they say what happens as x goes to infinity, in my example here, h of x approaches positive infinity. Okay? Now the only other thing that might happen with a polynomial is that sometimes h of x is going to approach what? Negative infinity. That can happen in some examples. Okay. Here, if the leading coefficient is negative 2x to the 6th, let's talk about the end behavior of f of x, because that's really the problem I was supposed to do. So up here, end behavior. I want to think about as x goes to infinity and as x approaches negative infinity. What would you say about f of x? as x approaches infinity. Well, I look at that. x to the sixth is going to be huge, right? But I'm multiplying by what? So what's that mean? f of x is going to approach what? Sure, because it's negative huge. Negative two trillion or whatever. You see what I'm saying? What about as x approaches negative infinity? Well, x to the sixth is very positive, even when you put a negative number in. Does this make sense? But then I multiply by negative 2, so what's going to happen to f of x? It goes to negative infinity. And that should have been the answers you'd see in the, on the homework.